that is almost synonymous with packaged coconut oil in India. But few realize that the evolution of Parachute, Marico's most popular brand, also reflects the story of the company, which evolved from a commodity player to a brand creator. The man behind it has been the company's founder, Harsh Mariwala, who ventured out just as India's economy opened up in 1991. Parachute uh, was a brand existing when I joined the organization. But uh, the sales were mainly in bulk pack, which is 15 litre tins, which was sold to the retailers and in turn retailers sold it loose to the consumer. And at that time I realized that uh, if the whole business can be converted from bulk uh, oils which are sold in loose to a branded route, then I think the business will become far more stable, sustainable and far more profitable. But you retained the parachute name, which has an interesting yes. story behind yeah. it. So you must tell us about it. Well, when I joined the organization, parachute was existing and I, a lot of people told me that you have to change the brand, you know, it will never cut ice in terms of consumer packs. But uh, I don't know why, but it was selling well, so I continued uh, retaining that brand. Uh, the brand name origin came from the World War uh, days, when parachute was a new thing uh, during the Second World War. And at that time, Bombay Oil Industries uh, was formed and there was a need to launch a coconut oil in, in big tins. And parachute at one level uh, was new. At the other level also, it uh, depicted some sort of a symbol. And it was known those days as in the trade by a chata brand because it looked like a chata. Chata is like an umbrella. So, I continued uh, pushing that in small packs and looking back, I think it was a good decision. Then, of course, Safola happened, which yeah. is also an interesting thing because it got the health benefit into an oil category, which is not sure. normally connected. Correct. So, how did you go about doing that? Well, Safola also as a brand existed, but it was sold in very small pockets of Bombay and Delhi. And what I did was actually take the brand, extend the brand nationally and promoted that aggressively through the marketing route. And I think good thing is because we kept the same positioning is good for the art for last 20, 30, 40 years, it has become a far, far stronger brand. That initial identifying the right pieces and the right opportunity in that hard care space was very, very crucial. And the good thing is that we continue to that position uh, of good for the heart and it still exists as well. Mariko, in many senses, is a child of liberalization also. You, you know, you started your journey pretty mm -hmm. much when India opened up. It was also a time when all the big players was mm -hmm. putting in a lot of money. Suddenly yeah. their focus was in India. Mm -hmm. Was it a tough time to start out? Well, it was new for me and I didn't have any educational background or there was nobody to guide me from the top in terms of how to build, how to build a branded consumer goods company. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my learning came in through people who were working with me or certain consultants whom I was interacting with or thought leaders. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, it was, I went through my own set of mistakes and I, I must say I made a lot of mistakes, but the good thing is I learned from those mistakes. What were the mistakes? What were the early I mistakes? I mean, some of the mistakes were uh, launching certain new brands without really doing proper homework and they completely bombed. Mm -hmm. So that was some of the mistakes and taking certain shortcuts in the area of legal, and shortcuts in the area of quality assurance, just to save costs. And I think I realized that, you know, you can't take shortcuts uh, in certain key issues. What a lot of people have said about you, Mr. Mariwala, is that you created brands out of commodities in which nobody really noticed. Were yeah. you just lucky because you had these brands and you built on it? Or do you think, uh, what worked for you? I think, first of all, what is the differentiation you can bring in uh, to a commodity is the first step. In our case, in case of coconut oil, the key differentiators were the quality of oil compared to what was available loose then. The differentiators, we changed the whole market from, it was at that time dominated in tins. We changed the whole market to plastics. And plastics in various forms. We have a plastic bottle and we have a plastic wide mouth jar and then we have plastic, our answer to sachets which is a one rupee mini bottle. Uh, and a lot of credit must go to innovation in plastic and the quality of oil. But clearly uh, we gave something which is good for the consumer and then on top of that the right marketing mix to create the right brand image. In case of Safola, we are offering something which is good for the heart. So there was a differentiated benefit that we are selling it to the consumer that we offer a product which is good for the heart and which was also endorsed by the medical fraternity. So the key thing for anybody else who is wanting to brand commodities to say first, what is the value addition am I bringing in? Either in the area of marketing or in the area of packaging or in the area of product itself like better quality product.
which cuts ties with the consumer. But Marico's strategy has not been limited to creating brands. In 2006, it acquired Nihar, which HLL had bought, and it was the market leader in rural India. This acquisition gave Marico the undisputed lead in hair oil across markets. And the same principles applied in the global strategy as well. The strategy is clear that you need to go to markets which are emerging markets and not developed markets because developed markets is far more difficult to succeed. Developed markets have a different distribution kind of network, more geared towards modern retail trend, trade. and we have a certain strength in distribution we need to go to markets where we have what we call the right to win so we have a better right to win in emerging markets because these markets are growing and number 2 it is somewhat of a similar kind of distribution network and then if we are in in certain concentrated geographies it is easier for us to to expand because there are certain synergies you get in terms of consumer habits in terms of supply chain synergies in terms of media spillages so on paper it makes sense to actually concentrate on certain clusters of geography rather than going and expanding all over you know and in terms of visa management also will be easier for example if i am in egypt and if i am in middle east i get synergies a lot of synergies from supplying from egypt factory to the middle east markets i get synergies in terms of media spillages you know sure. um synergies in terms of similar consumer habits which so are no consumer similar in, I, in the there are Asian certain region and what, what are the differences and what, what are the similarities for example hair oiling as a habit is existing in india it exists in the neighboring markets like bangladesh pakistan sri lanka it exists in, in middle east markets but beyond that to some extent egypt market but beyond that nowhere in the world hair oiling is a habit exists because it is fall out mm-hmm. so there is in what we may call the habit exists in these markets because they were geographically mm-hmm. near each other but you also had uh, early lessons in your international markets yeah. especially the kind of products so the kinds of oils that you use uh, that that's been very interesting because so you were talking about how cactus oil is what is used in middle east and that the learning came a little late yeah no i think they were used more as an extension but uh, they are more extensions some of the brands of the you know, local ingredients like cactus or snake oil also there so there were opportunities some small shall i say niches available because of certain popularity or certain ingredients that mm. there in that market you know cactus being in in the desert it grows so we realized that there was an opportunity mm. to you also done a fair bit of acquisitions both internationally and in india the last one over here was of course record bankai's yeah. old paris clutch yeah. of products yeah. so, as you go ahead would you want to expedite the process of creating brands by just acquiring brands and are there enough in the system to do first of all the second question is there are not enough opportunities for acquisition but any organization has to grow both through organic as well as inorganic means so we always on the lookout for inorganic expansion as well as don't keep your eyes off organic expansion i think the key thing for any organization to determine is to what category they need to occupy and within that category what are the options open so acquisition is not an end by itself it's means to an end so either you want to develop your own brand and launch it in say mail grooming or you want to acquire something and get a foothold and launch it and that's a call you need to make you know which is a better choice by is it acquisition or is it uh, is it uh, launching your own brand while marivala claims that there is no fixed formula he does seem to have a clear strategy in place because while marico is expanding horizontally across new geographies it is also expanding vertically into new categories and while some innovations have worked others haven't fared so well so what are the lessons learned more on that when we return